how to analyze a mock that's what we're going to dive into today it's a very very important part and all of us uh, we keep saying spend more time analyzing a mock than you did taking it spend more time uh, you, if you take a mock for two hours you should look at and take stock of where you stand for six hours right? so very often students think what can I do for six hours analyzing this? I'm going to dive a little deeper into this. Right? So I'm going to break this into three parts. Right? My brain really works if I can break things into structures and smaller, smaller parts. There are 17 parts, my brain doesn't work. So therefore, three parts and only three parts. First time, first one, very, very important, super crucial is decision making. Right? And I'm not talking about strategic decision making and decision making about my life. Question selection. And, and, and once again, I like working with very clear, defined targets, very specific targets. Right? So I'll say you have VARC, you have LRDI, you have quant. Right? In this, when you're analyzing your question selection, you should say, I'll find three questions here. Right? One set here. And either one RC passage or three VA questions that I should have not done, that I ended up doing. Remember, lots of time question selection hinges very much on question elimination. And so, super important to say, to flip this question and say, look, I've taken this mock. I've attempted eight questions here, two LRDA puzzles I've tried and two RC passages and five questions I've done. What is the RC passage that I should not have read and gone ahead with? I got three out of four questions wrong. What's even the point? What is the LRDA puzzle I should have skipped? I spent 17 minutes and got nothing from it. What are the three questions I spent 14 minutes on? Identify them and then say, next time around, this type of question I'm leaving. Specifically, this questions, this set, this puzzle. You don't need to generate clear rules every time, but do this as a process and say, look, these three questions I should have skipped. This LRDA site I shouldn't have looked at or I should have left in two minutes. This passage, I didn't understand anything. I didn't get it. Why was I going through that passage twice over? I didn't get it. So either one RC or oops, or three VA questions, you should select that you ended up attempting in the mock that you shouldn't have touched. When you're doing it, Initially, this may be five, six, this could be two sets, this could be two passages, but typically it will come down to this. So do that, do that alone. Other things will fall in place automatically. If you can find the right questions to skip, you will automatically end up attempting the right questions. Very often, the, the, the selection algorithm is very much dependent on the elimination set of rules. You leave the stinkers. Right? So, and there are, mathematically, there are two types of mistakes you can make. Let's do this. Right? So let's have some fun. Right? So, yeah. Attempted yes or no. Should have done yes or no. I should have attempted it. I ended up attempting it. Great. Plus three. This is a good quadrant to be in. I shouldn't have touched it. I poke. I didn't touch it. Not my kind of question. I left it. Great quadrant. Right? These two are the wrong quadrants. It was not, I didn't attempt it. It was right up my alley. I missed out. It is just not my thing. I ended up doing it. Right? This is what is going to kill you. This you pay a small price. Understand this, very important to understand this. Every time you're taking a decision, you should think about where the payoffs are. If the decision going well, if it is plus 10, and going wrongly is minus 3, you should gamble. Decision going well is plus 3, going wrong is minus 20, you should stay away. How the payoffs are. Attempting a set that is not in your zone can kill you. An LRDI puzzle that's not in your thing, you can spend 15 minutes, go nowhere. Missing out on something that's right up your alley, one question, gone, roll with it. It's not going to kill you. You're not spending time. The most precious thing you have in that context is time. And so, and your mood and your temperament and this can kill your score. And so, so therefore, because it is asymmetric, your rule for selection should be on the basis of, look, I'm not touching these fellows. I should laugh and smile and be very happy. I'm very happy. 
don't touch it and so be very clear about the 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 entire thing being towards leaving questions not doing the stinker moves and so a lot of practice is required for question selection question selection is the number one driver for speed it's not your speed of computation not your speed of multiplying it's not your speed of reading how good you are in selecting a right sets the speed that's what drives your speed if you can take that decision making better and better better and better you'll fly and so that is what we need to train on very often for speed we want to read faster we want to multiply faster we want to divide faster and, and we do all kinds of things to do faster 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 we just get frenzied if you have clarity with this that drives speed speed is not individual question solving speed speed is how many can i do in 40 minutes speed that means you make better and better decisions there you you you'll, you'll end up acing the big speed question not the miniature speed which they are irrelevant and so this is a driver for it so spend conscious effort in getting better okay. second thing to keep in mind is is learning right obvious simple rule look at the questions that you got incorrect look at the ones that you skipped then look at the ones that you got correct you walked into something you should know what mistake you made this is frightfully good for learning whether you walked into a trap or you made a silly error or a silly mistake or you didn't know that funda or you, you you misunderstood something then you learn that and you say hey okay register this i'm i i tend to make these kind of mistakes i should be more careful about them something that think goes to your system this one especially once where you you look at a question and say this is from that funda and i don't know that then you say okay i'll go through this and then and then fill that funda gap then go through this to see if there's a better method better way of approaching all of that right so very crucial when you do this that you'll end up validating your decision making or invalidating it when you're going through this after you've gone through that you'll see a bunch of questions here that oopsie that you should have attempted that means you should have skipped a bunch of one that you got wrong super important so this will get reinforced here one more round you'll figure out spending it and so this the learning cap and analyzing at a question level very important in learning the two parts one, one is funda linked other is speed linked and so if you're not if you didn't get even get the zone of the passage and you're in completely another world then you have to read slower then you have to figure out ways of uh, understanding nuance and tone and stuff like that read, read slower and read tougher articles to read between the lines right? if you are getting um, if you, if you rush through an answer and missed an obvious choice then you you're, you're thirsting for speed you need to address that and so where sometimes you, you you get a passage right but you spend too much time on it you spend 19 minutes on it 18 minutes on it maybe i need to improve speed you need to know whether your your gap is here or here in quant if it is funda based then go back to theory fill the funda if it is page speed based take to practice test topic wise test section test questions from that topic basically say hit me with speed time distance do six questions your speed will get amped up you get familiar with those ideas fill this gap or this gap based on what this analysis tell you the objective here is to learn when you're coming here you will have a part of your brain that automatically validates this but otherwise is saying look i am not worrying about the overall question selection paradigm i'm worrying about hey i'm learning speed time distance today i'm learning about circle today i'm learning about venn diagram for the logical reasoning puzzle i've learned the meanings of these three words which keep repeating in all these economics passages i didn't know today i know and right? so learning gap linked thing not direct score mark percentile tangible linked and so finally right? the overall um, strategic things every mock should help you have a clear idea in your head about what are you going for under normal circumstances hypothetically verbal is my strength and i think i can get 34 35 in verbal uh, i typically attempt 16 questions and i get only 2 3 wrong and am i getting there am i in that zone or i attempt 18 questions and get only 4 wrong am i in that zone Did this example go with it? Is my overall plan for where I am getting my marks? Is that right? 
uh, in LRDI, I generally do one puzzle. I'm hoping to take it to two. Is it working? In quant, I usually attempt only eight, nine questions, but I get most of them right. Is it working? I want to get 35 in verbal, 20 in LRDI, and 20 in quant. That is my route to 75. That represents my ambition. Maybe I can get better than this, but this is where I stand. I'm going into the exam hoping to get 75 and a good percentile that opens a bunch of doors. You could be the person for whom the whole math works for 90, where you get 25 from verbal, 20 from LRDI, 45 from quant, depending on your strengths and weaknesses. But you go back and say, okay, I am going in expecting to do this, this, this. This is my strong section. Those two are my okay, okay section. I'll nail this, get that and then go back. So your plan about what is your default play should get better. So you pause some time, you spend some time and take stock and do that. Other strategic level, overall paper level decisions, where are my fatigue errors coming? Where am I making mistakes because I'm, I'm tired? Where am I marking absurd choices without even processing? Where was I not smart enough to go from answer choices? Uh, how do I combat that? How did I overlook this word distinct when I was looking at that question? Uh, is it tiredness? Is it silly mistake? Is it something else? Should, if it would have been better off if I just took a deep breath, paused for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, <sighs> rebooted myself and channeled again. Is that 20 seconds totally worth it in the context of a 40 minute paper? And should I actually do that? Because otherwise I'm just, um, my mood from LRDI is messing up my first 15 minutes of quant. It has happened three times in the last six mocks. I cannot afford to do this. I have to reset my brain. Do I work on that? How do I work on that? All of those things. So three mocks ago, I got 92. I've never been able to get even closer to 75. After that, what did I do that day? Was I super rested? Did I take it in the morning? Did I have a nice water bottle? Or did all those environmental things matter? So the, the, the 10,000 feet view. Fatigue, silly error, question selection, my plan for D-Day, that kind of thing you do after filling the doing some improvements with question selection after filling learning gap spend some time just just taking stock so before all this there is every chance that you have looked at your score mark rank percentile all of that do that and sometimes you just want to see that number at the end of it and so you just want to see ah oh, i got 92.6 good better than last time worse than the time before good 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 we we, we tend to anchor ourselves around that percentile and that number and rank and, and whatever those little uh, quantifiable numbers are all of us are like that okay. so it is it is utterly inevitable take it in your stride see those numbers if you are in the habit of writing it down somewhere and all that do that then get it out of the way that is uh, an inevitable part but not necessarily the crucial part don't do a chart of percentile how is it moving over the last 10 months it's irrelevant useless Lots of time percentile numbers for mocks are uh, wrong, incorrect and they carry some some biases in the sample that are possibly tough to kind of unravel and so so ignore them, don't, don't ignore them, de-emphasize them, okay and then carry on. The analysis is what can you take away for the next mark, not process what this number is or could have been and so keep it in mind. This is what we mean when we say uh, dive deep into analysis mode. One part is question selection, one part is learning, one part is taking stock. Obviously, the learning part will utterly dominate early on. When you've covered a lot more syllabus, when you're doing better and better in your mocks, even the learning requirements will shrink, which is when the taking stock requirement will, will probably will become a little bit more, but your analysis time itself will shrink, as it should. Your first mock you take for two hours, probably solving all those questions will take eight hours. So the learning itself is eight hours. Right. But as you go further and further, further and further, you'll clearly know why you have skipped the questions you have skipped and you don't even want to learn them. Skip them. You'll know that your correct answers you have done by the best method. Forget them. Fix the errors, fill the gaps, carry on. So your analysis time should shrink over time, but give it definitely the time that it deserves. And so the most important part here on in is mocks and analysis. Spend lots of time doing that. Best wishes.